Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm so glad you're here this morning. We've got a big show lined up, a special guest here. As always, we'd like to get our weather done, brought to us by Haney Technical Center. It's going to be, well, it's going to be raining, about a 90% chance of rain. But a good part about that, it's not going to be quite as hot. It's only going to get up to about 89 today, low 78, and uh, flip those numbers around uh, 80 to 87. That's our water temperature, 78 low and 87 water temperature. The river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Take it outside with Mountain Dew. Both rivers are in good shape. The Apalachicola did have a little bump in it yesterday, and that's funny because we didn't anticipate it when our, you know, once they sent out that forecast, but it does happen. So it bumped up a little bit, but it's, it's sort of dropping out a little bit today to 4.2, and the Choctatchee at Caraville is at a 2.3, and this guy's going to be going up. If we're gonna have, both of them will be going up a lot, especially Choctatchee now. With all this rain coming in, we're going to have some rising water for the weekend, so be aware of that. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn uh, right here on 23rd Street. Today is July the 10th, and we're looking again at neat tides today, but tomorrow, the next three days, we're going to have a falling out tide in the afternoon. So it's going to be interesting if you can get on the water, a strong falling out tide, especially Saturday. Hopefully it'll all be out of here by Saturday, but it's really strong tide coming up this Saturday on the 13th. And we're looking at the marine forecast east-southeast. All that weather system is to the east of us. It's going to be coming that way. And you can see, I know you all followed it real close. It's going to be coming on into the Gulf out toward Louisiana. But we will be getting a lot of rain. And uh, just be aware of that as you plan your outdoor activities. Take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back, and welcome to our guest this morning, Daniel Cole. Good morning, <laughs> How's Daniel. How's it going, bud? Good to see you. Good to have you. Daniel's always uh, had an interesting month before he comes in here, talks about he's been Spanish mackerel fishing and up to Mariana and Blue Springs and, and yeah. all kind of stuff. But uh, before we get into all these pictures and all we've got that you brought, let's uh, let's get an update on the Governor Stone, because we're going to do a monthly update. So what's going on with the Governor Stone? Well, we're still making progress. Uh, of course, there's a lot of information we have to still find that we're we're finally getting access to like the original drawings that will tell us how to restore this vessel to such a set that it'll be uh, still remain its historical marker value yeah. and all and uh, that's that was really the key thing of, that we wanted to do from the beginning so well we got all our information in-house that we need we're moving forward with FEMA uh, been in contact several times with the representative to to go ahead and expedite uh, the process for funding mm -hmm. and uh, working with uh, Amanda here, who's the president of the Friends of the Governor's Stone uh, Society there. Just a great lady, very dedicated to our community, very yeah. dedicated to this vessel. And it's been a real pleasure working mm -hmm. with her. And, uh, you know, the quality of our people here in Bay County is what makes it such a great place to live. So yeah. I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this project, and we are making progress. Now, what a worthwhile project, too. And I know we're going uh, to keep updated on month by month and all, and I know it's going to be a slow process. But, uh, well, however it takes, it takes, it but we're going to yeah. get her done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've been, you were up there recently, uh, that, well, last week or so, up there. In Sunday. Mariana. Sunday, okay. Yep. So tell us what's going on. This picture here. Tell us, where are you? That's uh, on Blue Springs mm -hmm. uh, in Mariana. We actually launched uh, there at Airhead and went up, which uh, Airhead is, I guess, sold now, and it's actually part of uh, the state parks. Uh, procurement division, I guess. Now that the Mariana Caverns is damaged and only working in minimal capacity, it seems like they have helped uh, by buying that place or doing something with it where now it's controlled okay. by state entities uh, contractually versus uh, privately owned. Okay. But uh, we went up the, hey, anyone who's been up there, it's a great place to go. Beautiful, clear water. Uh, oh man, here it is. It's nice. You can take your pets because uh, the clear water. There's, there's so few. I've only ever seen, I think, two gators in all my time of going up there, and they were little. But uh, it's not a good place for them to hunt, so they don't hang around. And uh, and snakes, because uh, the cold water, they don't seem to like to be there either. So yeah, they don't. <laughs> it, it, it's actually a nice place to be. Uh, so. Now you were, uh, how far run up there did y'all take? Oh, you can run all the way up to the headwaters, which is uh, actually Blue Springs, and. Uh, the whole thing's maybe 
uh, maybe three miles. I'm not, okay. I'm not exactly sure on that, but we used to kayak it all the time from end to end. You can, you can paddle it in about two hours, three hours, and you can, uh, if you're taking your time and then boating mm -hmm. it, I mean, 15, oh, cool. 15, 20 minutes, you're up there. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, and then you also did some, uh, let me see, I think I got all the pictures covered. We also, uh, you went uh, fishing too, right? Yep. Tell us about uh, the Spanish mackerel. Took my family out, uh, that was actually about a week ago, and uh, we were doing really well with them. Yeah. And uh, we had a great time out there. Y'all went right outside the pass? Yeah, went outside the pass and we ran down uh, to the east end of the island. That's my wife reeling them in. She was having a blast. <laughs> That's the that's the key to a successful couple trip. Let your wife catch the fish. Yeah, that was the uh, downside there. This uh, this, this was outside the pass. We were trolling back in, and I was just about to hit the gas. Something hit the foot on the uh, engine, and it was a loud clunk. Boom! Knocked it out of gear, mm -hmm. and turned around, went to go look. This thing was semi submerged, and uh, so anyway, we we picked it up and we brought it in, uh, okay. just so no one else would hit it. That's our dog, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. <laughs> he was ready to go that day uh, that for the Mariana trip. So yeah. he uh, got up on the boat and he said, Daddy, I'm wanting to go. So I he got to go. <laughs> That's cool. But now here's that board again. So yeah. we just had our floating outside the pass. Yeah, it was just floating. And, and because it's pressure treated, you know, it's so heavy in the water. It was it was like just barely even floating. It was a quarter inch below the surface. When I hit it, I never even saw it. Well, you know, we talk about we talk about all the hurricane damage and all, and this is really a huge problem in the first couple of months. That's we right. haven't mentioned lately, but it's still out there. Yep. And then you saw it. Yeah, and I mean, this is you know we're talking about almost nine months later. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I tell you what happened. We had a really heavy storm come in the other day, and in fact, I asked a friend of mine. They said they had after the hurricane they had one tree left. And be doggone if that last storm didn't blow it over. Oh man, <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. And so all that, all that, uh, and then a lot more debris was blown into the water where these, mm -hmm. these storms were having, because some things were like real close and then just finally blew in. So uh, that's the thing about it. that messed up a prop. Yep. And your foot. So like if if I'd have been flying the way it hit, just the way it hit, mm -hmm. it was so heavy from being saturated, it it probably would have would have broke something in the foot. Yeah. So. We were very fortunate we were going slow. And, and another thing is, hey, when you see something like that out there, don't leave it out there for someone yeah, else to run into. If right. you can't put it in your boat, tie a rope to it and drag it in. But, you know, I see people, they bypass stuff. I know. And it's, uh, I know and people have been also been good about bringing, I see a lot of people bringing that stuff in, but some people just go right by it. So, they do, and know. it's like, you know, that, that, it's inconsiderate. Yeah, they're the same kind of people that walk down the uh, down the road and all. They're gonna pick up the trash or either walk by. They do the same. That's thing. right. That's right. Thing. So, uh, hopefully, most of our viewers are the ones gonna pick it up. And uh, that, but that is a good point. Uh, on the Spanish mackerel, how how y'all? Uh, we were trolling for them. Or how, we yeah, we were trolling. Uh, everybody told me that they were gone. Of course, we had such weird weather. Yeah, yeah. This windy weather. You know, everybody said they were gone. We did really well in in the bay, and then did it again. Uh, Everybody said they were gone when we went, which was about, I think that's now two weeks ago. Yeah. We went outside the pass and trolled using the old, the old Christmas tree rig. Yeah. That thing just keeps catching. But anyway, yeah. and we were having double, triple strikes. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, we were able to get those in. And, and, and we really had, a lot of people are not fishing now for Spanish mackerel because they think everything's gone. But you're a mm. classic case of where they're still out there. You just got to fish Diligence for them. Diligence and persistence. Yeah. We just kept running until we hit them. And then you... You keep shortening your scope of travel, and finally we got into about a hundred yard arc. We were just and it just started boop, going boop, around. Boop, 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 boop. Each time we went through, we that's, were picking them up. That's the key: just locate, locate, and then once you do, you know, that little circle you made. How, mm -hmm. how deep water were they in? Uh, these were in uh, nine to eleven foot. There you go. There and you go. Uh, I don't know why six point five mile an hour seems to be the key speed here, but it seems to work just fine with them. So. That's cool. That's cool. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back. You're sitting with Daniel, and we got talking about boats and everything. And you, you brought up a good point. Uh, you went across a uh, uh, porthole cover recently at an at a, uh, antique store, and they say it's from so and so boat and all, but we can't really prove it yet. With it being local, you think it might be true? It's very possible because of the, the sources. Uh, and, you know, artifacts from the Empire Mica do float around every now and then. But yeah. growing up in Appalachia, that 
that vessel was like a legend. Yes. It, yeah. My uh, my great granddad was one of the fishermen there locally who went out to rescue the sailors who were burnt from the that boat being torpedoed. There, of course, they didn't have uh, mm -hmm. a lot of resources out there in Appalachian Bay or, or mm -hmm. Gulf at that time, you know, off of there. So. And I talked to uh, some other people who actually saw it blow up and all how you know the mm -hmm. eyewitnesses and. Uh, it was an amazing time in, in World War II history and all. But. Well, you know, but just the week before that happened, uh, English-speaking German sailors came aboard in Appalachia and went to the A.M.P. and bought groceries was, uh, and uh, went back uh, out you know, people, to the submarine. Yeah, <laughs> went back to the submarine. Is, yeah, that was amazing stories and all. We didn't realize how many U-boats were in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, and uh, they've done an article on it lately. Some guys written books about it, but there are a lot of U-boats out there. Sure. And uh, no one knew that at the time, so it's interesting. All right, let's move on up from uh, from U boats to uh, to Jaws. Check this out. This, now this is in, this is not local, but here this is this picture is fascinating. <laughs> wow. It is actually in Naples. It came out of Naples, but what they do down there? This is a Goliath grouper. So here's what they do down there. When you catch a big Goliath grouper, uh, they the people jump in the water, and because they don't get them out of the water, they leave because they release these big ones. So you jump in the water and they take your picture in the water with the grouper. Well, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't quite do that with this one. This captain said he's not going to do this anymore with his customers because that, now that had to have been a huge, instead of the bull shark, that had to have been a huge shark. Look at that cut right there. That, that's huge. Well, you know, I saw one the other day, a guy caught a very large, and I, and I, don't, I don't know what type of shark it was, but they pulled just the head of the shark on board. Everything behind it was gone, but there was three and a half foot of head. Mm on mm -hmm. the gunwale, mm -hmm. and a bigger shark than him cleared everything from the head out. Mm -hmm. So we got some big sharks out there right now. In fact, they've been reporting a couple of great whites off of uh, Destin out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's, that's true. And uh, you know, they'll do the same thing with a tarpon. You get yeah. in the water, you get in the water with a tarpon, and I, I, I've seen a lot of tarpon bitten in half by sharks. I, was, uh, I know down when I went to Barker Grand down there, all the captains talked about, you know, you want to get that tarpon uh, re released as soon as you can because sh the sharks, sure. the huge sharks are just there waiting on them. And uh, it, it's interesting though, so just constantly be aware of them. And all. In fact, here's a, here's a picture. This is normally what they do. This is not the same. I looked up this picture to tell you what, people are catching a Goliath grouper, they're jumping in the water, you pose for the picture, and then you get back out of water, but I don't, I don't think that they're going, they're going to be slowing down doing that now. So uh, the same thing with tarpon. All right, I got some pictures sent in. It's been fascinating uh, on all our pictures. Uh, hey, coach had to, had an opportunity to go fishing. Now this is good right here. I had an opportunity to go fishing the weekend with my son. Uh, this is uh, Ray Neighbors. My son Braden, my girlfriend Becky, and her family had a great time. We even caught a tag snapper. Check this out, folks. Another tag snapper right there. Okay, we are getting some good reports on tag snapper, but that is a good family trip right there, Ray. In fact, here's a uh, here's another picture. My son Braden caught a nice trigger fish. Trigger fish has been good lately. Now, this is the first one. He had to throw it back, of course, that not in season. A big thanks to our captain Mark Warren. Uh, in the picture of having my son, we had a blast, and we enjoy your show. That's a great picture right there, but that's, uh, I love to see y'all sharing these pictures with us and all. And speaking, we talked about it yesterday, about that state record of flathead catfish. Here's another picture of it. And I'm, I'm gonna get an FWC biologist coming on next week. We've already got them booked up on next week, and we're gonna talk about the state record flathead catfish. This actually, we said it's 70 pounds, 69 pounds and five ounces right there. That's in the Yellow River up wow. here in Scamia County. And his uncle had the state record for a good while. But now that Oh well that's something when your nephew takes your record, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're that keeping it in the family. You know, <laughs> so you know they got some family secrets on catching these. Yeah, they do. And speaking of tag redfish, our buddy Nat Harris sent out sent his he, he sent his tag off of that red snapper. I'm talking about red snapper now, not redfish. Red snapper. He caught this and they sent him a certificate of appreciation and uh Look at all the colleges that participate in this Red Snapper program. It's LSU, Florida, uh, Southern, uh, Southern Mississippi, uh, South Florida. So it's a conglomeration. And uh, then they give it, they go, look at that, $250 gift card for reporting that Red Snapper. Now, that nice. Dad Harris caught three of these in the past month. So he got $750 for catching Red Snapper. 
And I, I sent pay for your trip. I, I sent uh, okay. Here's a, here's another certificate he got. And I got his name on it. Nat Harris right there, and uh, and what? So I asked Nat. I, I asked him. I said, uh, "This is just awesome. Way to go. Where did they, where did they tell you uh, where it was tagged uh, and and how old?" He said it was tagged in Houston three years ago. They told him that. Wow. And we're waiting to reply on how old it is. So we know at least three years old. It came from Tech, Houston, nice. Texas, out this way. Traveling. So uh, that, that's a fascinating thing about it. Uh, you know, we're talking about tagging triple tail, tagging redfish, tagging red snapper. You can actually follow follow them, and everybody's learning, including the fishermen. That's right. But that, that's that's interesting there. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead. We're going to take our final break and come back and show you some good good pictures here. All right, welcome back. So here we are, our good friends, our boat surveyor, boat expert, Daniel Cole. I guess you've been called a lot of things. That's one of them. That's one of the better things. Uh, <laughs> but I'm serious now. He knows so much about boats, and uh, I've heard from so many people. What a great job Daniel Cole is doing in our in our Panhandle area. So any kind of boating uh, questions you have, they can give you a call, right? Yes, sir. And uh, I guess uh, anyway, we got to finish. I got some pictures. I got a special picture to show you. But let's do our fishing game times. Brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers out of Port St. Joe. We're looking at 7.36 to 9.36 this morning. And this evening from 8.01 to 10.01. And I had a buddy went floundering the other night. Didn't get very many flounder, but got 27 blue crabs. So that ain't bad. That ain't bad. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you go get some, that many crabs. So this is the time of year, July. July and August is the time of year to go, uh, to go crabbing. Now, I'm going to set this, this series of pictures up. It's going to be... Uh, July 4th, like I said, we get all our family to come down for three or four days, and, and our family from, from Liberty County over there in Bristol, my nephew Matthew and Lynette, and uh, Sarah Kate, the daughter Sarah Kate and son Dylan. Well, Dylan's been a big, big outdoorsman in the family, he's been hunting and fishing with his dad, and Sarah Kate's sort of been the, the cheerleader type, she hasn't been outdoors. And speaking of, she is a cheerleader now at Liberty County High School, going into the 10th grade, I believe 10th grade. and. Uh, so she spent some good quality time with with her cousins, Wendy's kids, and uh, and Chip's kids, and we just had a wonderful time. But one of the things we did, we took them down to State Park, okay, down to St. Joe State Park, because I wanted to see how how it looked being closed up. So it was it was myself and Wendy and the three girls, and we're just walking around, just and uh, parked over by the boat landing, and walked toward the campground. And folks, it is completely closed in. That that cut. From the Herrick and Michael, it's completely closed in, and you can walk around. So we're walking around, the girls are just splashing around. This is a beautiful afternoon, late in the afternoon. And Sarah Kate, Sarah Kate Chester <laughs> from Bristol, Florida, she saw, we all sort of, I heard her screaming. Ah, because they were all doing that, running up and down screaming. I looked Typical. over there. Daniel, I mean, I couldn't believe it at first. Uh, let's see. My dog on, I still can't believe it. Let me see. All right. I looked over there and uh, she was holding a flounder. I, I said, where'd you get that? She said, I just caught it with her hand. She caught this flounder with her hand. And so we were, we were clicking away, or I was clicking away, and now she's letting it go right here. Uh, okay, so we got a picture of her letting it go. And you can see it's swimming, see the wake where it's swimming away? Now you see how deep water she's in, not even an ankle deep, and that little flounder late in the afternoon was up. See the area right here? Yep. See it swimming away? And you can see, uh, she got, we just got tickled out of it. So uh, we didn't have a camera ready. I didn't have a big camera with it. We had our phone cameras. And, and so uh, well, I said, how in the world did you catch it? And she said, I just started, uh, I saw it down there, I just reached down there and got it. I said, oh, it's pretty simple. So anyway, so I asked, uh, so I asked Wendy to see if they could video it. So we're gonna try to, I got a, now Jeff, this is going to be a bad picture, but it's only like six seconds. So she is, okay. So she is down there. She's reaching down there. She's catching it right there. Look at her. We're running down to her. Hold it, hold it. She's holding it up. Okay. <laughs> okay, see how shallow, I'm going to do it again. You see how, I, I know it's real jerking off. You see how shallow it is. Okay. Another thing I want you to notice how closed up it is. She's caught that. Now, now she's the outdoor girl of the family. It's not, it's not Dylan. The Sarah Kate is the outdoor girl catching one by hand and all. So uh, anyway, that was just some exciting, exciting times over the July Fourth holidays. But that area is closed up. I'll show you. I went on Google Earth. Google Earth does not show it closed up. That gap, big old gap in there. 
but you know, one time 300 feet wide. It's completely closed up. You can walk from the boat ramp to the state park, but the state park has a big sign. I'm talking about the campground. Big sign says, do, you know, keep out. You can't go in there. Right. They're telling me that they're going to start on road construction in August, and in two weeks they're going to start, but they're not, it's not official. They're going to start road construction from the actual boat ramp area into the state park. So that's good news down there. Now, another thing I want to bring up, too, a completely uh, different subject, and with all these thunderstorms we're having, I know you're out there a lot. Doggone lightning strikes have been vicious, haven't they? They have been. Have you been seeing any out? Yep, we have. And in fact, when I came in uh, from Mariana the other night, uh, the mill pond turned into just a, it was bigger than anything the fireworks ever did. I, I, I've never seen so much lightning in one spot. I got a picture, somebody showed some firework display and then another state, then it said Florida fireworks. And what it was, it was a lightning, <laughs> and natural, natural. Yep. And i tell you what's been fascinating to me, because I've noticed it two or three times, especially uh, on July the 5th, we were down there, a big old storm came in on the Cape. And we and it's sort of coming out of the north now, and the east sort of coming odd. But uh, the aftermath, what I call the after, and I need to get a meteorologist on to talk about it. You know, the storm will come in with lightning and raining and heavy lightning, and then it go on through, and about 10 or 15 minutes later, you got a couple of what I call aftershocks. After, mm -hmm. And that's what catches people by surprise. Right. Because you want to go out, you say, oh, it's all clear now, or it's clearing up, so I want to go out. Well, you know, we were coming home the other day, and uh, no clouds. Uh, me and my family were driving back from town, and it had a, a hard lightning bolt from us right out of a blue sky. And I've heard of that before, but that's the first time I've ever witnessed it. So sometimes you may not have to have the clouds and the rain for that to happen. You need to be really careful. I, I know, and that's, that, that's happened a couple of times uh, uh, last uh, four or five days, those, those after, what are called yeah. after effects and all. So just as an outdoorsman, be aware of it and, and don't, don't go out too soon because it's, it's tough. Uh, we're about to wrap things up. We're talking about we on a, having a Saturdays away from football season, six or oh, six man. or seven. We're Just a about, few. <laughs> it's amazing. Just a few. Somebody posted the other day, so six or seven Saturdays they'd be playing football. Yep. Uh, so, uh, well, anyway, uh, enjoy this next well, month. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, at least, the, at least the team that matters, you know. Well, that's right. We, we, uh, <laughs> you know, we got a Georgia Bulldog back here. Jeff, hey, I, nothing but respect know, for the dogs, but I got so many friends over FSU, friends and family. I've and tried my whole do. life to try to show them the light, but it just whenever it happens. Well, so, but, it's a girl uh, school. They're still man. good I mean, friends. It's... They're good friends. <laughs> And I've got a, one of my degrees from FSU, so I can't talk about them. I'm good, just, I'm just talking. I love them all. I'm going to tell you, college football is the best thing to bring people together. That's true now. It really is. It's fun. We're going to wrap it up. I'll see you next month and catch some Spanish mackerel between now and then. You going to go again? Uh, I may try. I may go for something else. Okay. All right. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors, buddy. Take Thank care, you. partner. Do something good for your fellow man. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.